sing I try my best I try my best but still I fail
blood is one. Come on, church. Children of generations of every nation of kingdom come. Don't let your heart be troubled. Hold your head up, I don't fear him. Fix your eyes on this one truth. God is badly in love with you. Take courage, hold on, be strong. Remember where I am, comes from. your word you said if you if we would draw near to you you would draw near to us and father we have we've drawn near to you so I thank you that you are near you are here your presence your power 
Father, your will, it will be done in through every person's life. And so, Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, you excited to be in church this morning? Darwin. Absolutely. Hey, look, my name's Sam. I'm one of the pastors here. And again, a huge big welcome to Hillsong Church if you're new or visiting. Uh, what we'd love to do is in Darwin, as like here and we actually have welcome lounges and uh, we'd love to host you at the end of the service. We've got coffee, we've got food. We've got people there that can help maybe answer questions or talk to you more about our church. And for us here at Hills anyway, it's just around the corner, a place that we call the Western. And we'd love to have you and host you there. So make sure you do that at the end of the service and make sure you do that in Darwin as well. But I've got a whole lot of prayer requests in my hand and we're a praying church because we're a believing church. And uh, in a moment, I'm gonna ask people to put their hands towards these. But if you need a miracle, you literally need a miracle, whatever it looks like in your life. As we reach out our hands and pray for these, I want you to reach up your hand to heaven because we're gonna include you as well. So come on, why don't we do that, church? Father, I thank you. Lord, you see every hand that's reaching out towards every prayer request. And Father, we stand believing in the name of Jesus that has power and authority over all things. You see every hand that's raised to you. And Father, we lift up every prayer, every need. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we speak, Father, healing and breakthrough. We speak your word, your will, Father, across every person and across every situation. And we believe, Lord, it will be as you said it would be in Jesus' name. And mark every life with your presence, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hey, how good is church in the 1115 service? You've slept in, you've had breakfast, might have had brunch, and uh, you're here. And you know what? It's going to be an amazing morning this morning. Pastor Brian's going to be bringing the word later, and um, it's going to be absolutely great. So, hey, why don't you take a seat? I'm going to ask Nathaniel to come. He's going to come and encourage us around our giving. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Luke chapter 12 says this. You notice I've got a, I'm holding a Bible. You know, remember the paper version of the Bible? Luke chapter 12, verse 29 in the message translation. It says this. What I'm trying to do, and this is Jesus speaking, what I'm trying to do is to get you to relax. Not be so preoccupied with getting so you can respond to God's giving. People who don't know God and the way He works fuss over these things, but you know both God and how He works. And then I love this part, it's on the screen. It says, steep yourself in God reality, God initiative, God provisions, and you'll find your everyday human concerns all will be met. I love that part where it says, steep yourself in God reality. Do you know that there's two realities? There's two realities. Jesus taught us to pray in the Lord's Prayer that His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Do you know on earth, there's weeping, there's poverty, there's sickness, but in heaven, there's none of those things. So for you and I, our earthly experience needs to line up with our heavenly reality. As you know, when it comes to the feeding of the 5,000, you can see this, there was an earthly experience and there was no food for all the people, but you put Jesus in the middle and you put somebody with a contribution and then all of a sudden, a earthly experience can have a heavenly, heavenly reality. And that's my prayer for us that we would continue on this giving journey, that we would steep ourselves. It talks about, or it talks about a tea bag in a hot cup of water, or a city that's steeped in history. Everywhere you look, you see God at work. You see God moving. You see God doing what God only can do, bringing miracles, supernatural provision into our lives. So as we give this morning, let's continue to steep ourselves in a God reality in Jesus' Name. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Father, I thank You 
Lord, for the faithfulness of your people, but most of all, Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. And Lord, we pray, God, that we would continue to steep ourselves, immerse ourselves, Lord, in a God reality, in a heavenly reality. And I pray, Lord, that you would continue to provide, Lord, for every single person, Lord, miraculously and supernaturally, I ask. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's pass the containers along. Last night I was in, uh, in the city. The city has got Christmas Spectacular this weekend. And the Christmas Spectacular is... Whoa. The Christmas Spectacular is... Spectacular. Can I tell you right now, it's got everything going for it. It's got things for the kids. It's got drama moments. It's got beautiful performances. It's something that we can look forward to here at the Hills Campus, the Christmas Spectacular. Turn to the screens for all things Christmas at Hillsong Church. Hi guys, it's Pastor Brian and Bobby Houston from Hillsong Church and we just wanna take a moment to wish you the most amazing Christmas and festive season. We are so excited about what is coming up at Hillsong Church. We've got Christmas services that we believe will be impacting for everyone. It'll be so majestic, you won't regret it. See you soon. Merry Christmas. This one, for me, you. as a father, I'm um, being able to give my child a present for Christmas. It was something that I actually couldn't do. Yeah. But yeah, I was, that was probably yeah, when I was pretty much at my worst. And then not long after there, I ended up at 180. Look at that, a beauty. So for 17 years, I was in addiction. Um, but in the last six years, it just took a spiral. But when I came into 180TC, restoration started happening with my daughter, Eden. So for other people to actually have the generosity and the compassion and the kindness of their heart to actually give so that I could actually give to my daughter as a father, that was like the best thing that's ever happened in my life. Um, and that just showed to me, like, you know, just the generosity, just the compassion um, that people really have. So this year, coming to Christmas, being able to actually be with my daughter full time now, um, it's the best gift in the world. Um, and being able to now, with Stuff the Bus, with Hillsong, I can actually give back. So, you know, I still remember that, um, that day that I gave her, I got four presents from Stuff the Bus. Um, it was a bubble gun and she was all about bubbles. Like she loved bubbles and till this day, she still has that bubble gun. I'm so grateful and the gratitude that I have for Hillsong. Um, with 180TC, obviously, like that, uh, restoring men's lives, the gratitude that I have for, for both of these places, you know, is, is enormous in my life. So yeah, like Christmas to me this year, it's, it's obviously, it's about family, um, it's about love, but it's about what God and God's grace and His mercy in my life. Together. That is a great story. It's a great story. You know, the thing I love about Christmas and Hillsong Church is number one, we, we get to let people know what the good news is and that's what the Christmas Spectacular is all about. But you know, the other thing is um, we actually get to be the good news. We get to be the hands and feet of Jesus for people who without what we, what we do through Stuff the Bus and City Care wouldn't have the sort of Christmas experience that so many of us have. So please, it's only two and a half weeks away. Um, if you if you You've been meaning to get around to it. You can, you can give through Stuff the Bus on the giving app. Uh, you can just go through the website or the easiest way to get involved with Stuff the Bus, whether you want to give a, a tin of something or a toy or even a hamper. Kylie and I did a hamper last week. Actually, to tell you the truth, we actually did it while we're in the service. So don't tell, uh, don't tell them. And, um, but do that, hey. Do that before you leave. And uh, it's a great opportunity for us to really make a difference. Amen. Amen, amen. Hey, you know, we've got two of the amazing weekends coming up before Christmas spec. Next weekend, you know, our church, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're a small church, we've got lots of people. And one of the things that happens in our church is that, you know, so many things happen 
you know, through our conferences, through our events, in the everyday lives of our people. And we don't often get the chance to celebrate all the good things that God has done. And so next Sunday night, that's exactly what we want to do. We want to celebrate that. And we've got an incredible, incredible service. And, uh, it's, and basically, we want to look at what the Lord has done. And so I'm going to ask you right now, have a look at the screens because it talks about what's happening next week. So check it out. In 2018, we're going to live with the kind of big spirits that build around the things that unite us. I could get excited about this year. The watchmaker is at work. We can break a generation cycle of poverty. And here I am on Pat Moss. This could be the one. Big days for Hillsong College. Cheers to the guy who got us here. We're going to live larger. We're going to expect greater. We're going to dig deeper. And by God's grace, we're going to go further. That was my church, and those were my friends. I've always been loved here. I actually see a purpose and I see a plan for my life. Jesus, it's going to be an amazing, amazing, amazing night. Free food for everyone. We're going to have a huge celebration, which is going to be great. Hey, look, tonight, tonight, you know, we do this once a year and it's a huge highlight for us because it sets us up for 2019. Tonight is our anointing service. And we're gonna be anointing people with oil. We're gonna be praying and we're gonna be believing over people's 26, 2019 that's coming. And uh, can I say, in our kids, we're gonna do exactly the same with all our kids. Tonight's not the night not to bring the kids. Bring the kids. We wanna pray. We wanna believe God with them. And uh, it's gonna be absolutely brilliant. Five o'clock in the epicenter, six o'clock here. Don't miss it. It's going to be great. Hey, why don't we stand to our feet? You ready for the preaching of the Word? Yeah. Well, we are blessed because Pastor Brian's actually just flown in from Bali. He's been preaching from the city location uh, uh, all morning, and he's going to get you speaking live into from the city into us. But I reckon right now we should just join in wherever the city's up to, and, uh, and let's just join in. How awesome is that we're just one church in lots of locations, amen? So come on, why don't we join in? Father, we're grateful to be here in your presence today. And Lord, I just thank you 
that our redemption is in you, that our salvation is in your blood, that we can look to you. Lord, that you are the one that we can trust with our very lives. And every person gathered today, Father, you have a plan for them. And as we've been worshiping you, exalting you, glorifying you, Lord, already I believe you're doing something in the lives and the hearts of people. The things are breaking free in people's lives. Lord, walking in new liberty, walking in new freedom. And Father, we thank you for the chance we have to gather around your name today in Jesus' name. Come on, keep singing, everyone. be centered and I realize we just linked to all locations everywhere. I'm at Waterloo now. We linked from Alexandria for the earlier service and from Waterloo the service before that. And so it's so nice to be in the city with all you guys. And... <laughs> I spent five and a half hours on a plane overnight from Bali. Priest at Hillsong Bali on Friday night, which was a great experience. We had two services up there in Bali, and uh, I loved it. I loved the first time for me and for Bobby being at Hillsong Bali, so we loved that. And then the only flights you can get here from Bali come overnight. And so five and a half hours last night on a plane just to be with you. <laughs> and just to be with you guys there as well. For those at the hills, now you get to see what it's like for everyone else because you're the ones watching through the screen, which is good. Can't wait, can't wait. Tonight here, this afternoon and tonight here in the city is our Christmas Spectacular. And we've already had Friday night and two on Saturday, all of them packed and everyone's saying it's a tremendous show. So that's happening here at Hills tonight. Looking forward to being out there because we're having our anointing services, anointing services, absolutely in faith believing that we're anointing people's 2019 and just claiming God's promise and revival of the good things of God. So be ready for it tonight. Don't miss it. And bring people along as well. We're going to really anoint you. We're going to really go, you know, really go big time anointing you. And wherever else you guys are linked across this season between now and Christmas, every Sunday night there's something special happening. So we've also got not only the spectaculars and the anointing service, but we've got another night that we will fit in in all our campuses called the best night of your life. I mean, that's a big claim right there. The best night, that means it's better than your wedding night. The best night of your life. Think about that for a moment, the best night. So what's happening that night? Well, for a start, Maybe not quite better than your wedding night. Maybe not quite. But what it is, is just a fantastic celebration. We're going to celebrate right across our church, all our volunteers and all our hosts. So most of you come. I don't know whether we're doing it everywhere, but at Hills, I know that night, which is not tonight, tonight's anointing service, next week, that we are feeding everybody for free. Feeding the whole place for free. So I don't know. I don't know here because, you know, 
Nathan's a little bit tight and so... Can't make any guarantees here. No, but it's going to be fantastic. So we're also going to hear testimony story. You know what? In all the ups and downs of a year, you can lose sight of all the good things God does. So it's hadn't the Lord been kind to us, just reflecting on the goodness of God. We're going to hear stories, testimonies, miracles that are going to encourage us. It's just going to be the best night of your life. So don't miss that. Don't miss that. It's going to be something. And then, of course, we've got our Christmas services. Uh, and I know they're going to be beautiful and very special as well. Everyone say, it's coming back. You guys can be seated. Thanks so much for your help. It is coming back. They got all the chairs in here squished forward for the spectacular. It's annoying me. It's annoying me. It's called convenience. This service having to suffer for the next thing that's going to happen. That's not what we do here. We basically make it the best for the service we're in. Then we do the hard work of getting it ready for the next thing. It's what happens when the pastor doesn't come in enough. All these cultural things. I'm not blaming them, by the way. It's not their fault. All these cultural things just sneak in. So you've got to come back out here and reinforce, reinforce, reinforce. And so, uh, yeah. Psalm 92, verse 12. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. Palm trees grow huge, tall. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Lebanon is known for their huge cedar trees. Massive trees with beautiful vegetation. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall bear fruit still in old age. I love that part. They shall still bear fruit in old age. When I get old, I'll tell you what it's like to still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. All of this, fruitful, flourishing, fresh, all of this to declare the goodness of God. To point to the glory of God. To declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and this is, there is no unrighteousness in Him. Okay, well, I've been speaking about your financial journey. My goal over the last few weeks is to pump faith into you and your finances. And have you believe in that God's Word for your finances is true. I believe that no matter which way you look at it in the Bible, that you can have an expectation that when you want a God, you put Him first and it's going to come back. Whether you're talking about sowing, it's an eternal principle. As a person sows, that shall they also reap. It's coming back. If you're talking about giving, giving it will be given to you. Press down, shaking together, running out all over. Will he add into your bosom? In other words, it's coming back. Talk about helping the poor. And the Bible says that if you give to the poor, you lend to the Lord. Literally make a loan to the Lord and he will repay you with plenty of interest. In Jesus' name, when it comes to tithing, prove me now in this. Bring the tithe into the storehouse, the house of God. Prove me now in this and see if I'll not open the windows of heaven and pour out such blessing. There will not be room enough to. So those are just a few little examples. But the Bible over and over again makes it clear that you can have faith and expectation when you honour God that it's going to come back. And I'm not talking about giving to get. Are you talking giving to get? No, getting is kind of greedy and grabbing and holding and it's all about stuff. But I am talking about the biblical principle of receiving, giving and receiving, which is like the economy, if you like, of the Scriptures. It's the way the kingdom seems to work. And to me, receiving is very different than getting because there's a fluidity to it. It's kind of, you don't hold it tight. You give and you receive and you continue to bless and you receive. So it literally, literally, literally becomes something that has a, a, a rhythm, a fluidity to it, which I love. And so I'm talking to you about it coming back specifically. I'm talking about a journey. All of us are on a journey and all of us are on a financial journey and it started the moment you were born. I mean, whether it's voluntary or involuntary, you're on a financial journey because it happens to you. You were born absolutely stark naked. 
I don't know whether your mum or ever told you that, but you were born stark naked. You had nothing. You had never earned a cent. You had never paid a bill. You had never, ever had to do anything for yourself at that point. You had nothing. But that's where the financial journey starts and it ends at the end of life here on earth and whatever it is that we leave behind. And the journey I'm talking about is in between. Now, your journey, your life's journey and your financial journey. You see, for some people, it's just a horrific story involuntarily because they're born in such troubled parts of the world, so much devastation and poverty and horror that their journey is one of malnutrition and lack and scarcity and early death and all sorts of other horrible things. Other people, maybe you're a battler and your journey is you battled every step of the way just to try to get by and sometimes it feels like it's two steps forward and one step. Other people, you've worked hard and you've started over years to see the fruit of your labors and you've started to see God bless you and you find out other people maybe, you, you've, you've lived prosperous. Like whatever's happened in your world, however it came, you've lived prosperous. And whether you've been a good steward of that is the big, big question. And so it can look different for everyone, but it is a journey. Can I ask you on your life's journey, are you just out for a walk? As in strolling around, whatever will be, will be. Or do you understand the power of pilgrimage? You see, the Bible talks in Psalm 84 about those who are in God's house. And it says, blessed are those who dwell in God's house. So they'll still, old age, fresh and flourishing, they'll still be praising you. And then here it comes again, blessed, 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 happy, fortunate, and to be envied. Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, Lord. He knows where his strength, she knows where her strength is, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. I love the idea of our journey and your financial journey being a pilgrimage. A pilgrimage means there's a purpose to it, there's a direction to it. You're on your way to something, you're on your way to somewhere. Muslims go on pilgrimage to Mecca. Christians go on pilgrimage to Jerusalem. Other Christians go on pilgrimage to Sydney for the Hillsong Conference. Thank God for that. Thank God for that. What about you, your life? Aimless, wandering, no real, real sense of decisiveness about what your life's about. You see, pilgrimage is about the purpose of God. It's about destiny. It's about living your life with a purpose and a cause. And when we have that sense of pilgrimage and we attach that to the way we live our lives and approach our finances, then everything has a totally different spirit. Well, this journey, I talked about it being a seeking journey. Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God and it's coming back. All these things shall be added to you. It's a seeking journey journey. And when you seek God first, it's different than just putting God first. We can think, oh, it just means putting God first, but thank God for putting God first, but seeking is a much stronger original Greek word. The seeking word means literally craving for, hungry for, longing for God. All this other stuff doesn't even actually matter. Hungry for God. But with that spirit, it's coming back. All these physical, material needs and things shall be added to you. That's the context of the verses. It's coming back. It's a seeking journey. I spoke about it being a tithing journey, which is ultimately a journey of trust. It's trusting God and taking Him at His word. Prove me now in this. When you bring your tithe into the house of God, the storehouse, and see if I not open the windows of heaven for you and pour out such blessing for you that you shall not be able to receive it. And today, today I want to talk about it being a planted journey. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Listen to that verse. Listen to it at Psalm 92. And between being planted and flourishing is the house of God. In other words, God's house is central to us being planted in the things of God and then seeing it coming back and flourishing, flourishing in the courts of the Lord. I've been blessed because 
Really, the house of God has always been central to my life. I was born into the Salvation Army. My parents were Salvation Army ministers, and I guess the ministers, their kids used to be born in a Salvation Army hospital for unmarried mothers. That's where I was born. I literally was born in a hospital for unmarried mothers. So for two years, I was in the Salvation Army, and by the age of three, I was a Baptist. <laughs> a very good one. And by the age of five, my parents had become charismatic Pentecostal pastors. So from the age of five, and I grew up in my home church, really in New Zealand, from five till the age of 21, I was there planted in my local home church and youth ministry, et cetera, et cetera. And then went to Bible college and spent three years in a smaller church, learning the ropes and being a youth pastor. Then Bobby and I got married. We moved to Australia, joined what then was called Eastern Suburbs Christian Life Centre, which was in the Eastern Suburbs in pretty well Double Bay in a little hall called the Sherbrooke Hall. And we were there for five and a half years, which was obviously the, the background, the origins of what now has morphed into being our city campus. Then Bobby and I, when... I was 29, Bobby was 26. We moved out to the Hills District where you guys are and we started what now is Hillsong Church. So we've always been planted in the house of the Lord. Bobby got saved at 15. She'd been planted in God's house ever since. And can I tell you the truth? With God's house central to our journey, by God's grace, we're flourished. It's not as though there hasn't been some bumps along the way and as though there isn't some bumps along the way, but we will look at our children serving God, flourishing. We look at our grandkids all in the house of God, flourishing. We look at the opportunities God's bringing and has brought our way, flourishing. Looking at us as a church globally, flourishing. No matter which way you look at it, flourishing, 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 flourishing. That's why I believe in the power of planting yourself in the house of God. You are the house of God. In the Old Testament, the temple was the house of God. Now you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. So you are the house of God. And we, Hillsong Church, we together are the house of God. And then God's great church around the globe. That is the house of God. And that idea of being planted often goes against human nature. People like to go to church or visit church or to attend churches or even change churches. But I wonder if you understand the power of being planted and the capacity for that to cause you to flourish. Every plant begins with a seed. And if you think about it, it's what starts with a seed becomes a plant. And a plant ultimately can enable you to flourish, fruitfulness, flourishing. The absolute evidence that we are planted is in the seed that we sow into the house of God. If you sow of your first fruits, if you sow of your life into the house of God, you trust God, you take him at his word, you sow into the house of God, you become a healthy plant. And healthy plants have flourishing fruit in Jesus' name. And I love that. I don't want us just to be a plant. I'm believing Hillsong Church is a plantation. What do I mean by a plantation? You're a plant, 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 you're a plant. Hey, and um, we, we don't just want scraggly looking plants. No, no, healthy vines, healthy plants, planted in the house of the Lord and flourishing. So we are a plantation in Jesus' name and we're believing to see it blessed and strong. And so do you know that? Hebrew word for flourish, those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish. Do you know what that word actually means? It literally is translated fat, green, and full of sap. Fat, green, and I'm gonna change the name of Hillsong Church. We're gonna be the first church of the fat, green saps. What do you think about that? First church of the fat, green saps. It sounds good. Let's have it over the top of our Brisbane campus and our Hills campus and the Melbourne Athenaeum by tonight, the first church of the fat green saps. Hey, what is a fat green sap? Well, I'll tell you, it's healthy. It's healthy, flourishing, fat, fat, green, 
Hey, and full of juice, full of sweetness, full of nectar, full of fruitfulness. That's what it actually really means. And I love it. I love that that's what it actually means. And I love that we can be a church where people flourish. I have to ask myself as a pastor, if it's the will of God for the people who are planted in God's house to flourish, can they flourish under my ministry, under Bobby's and my pastoring? Because if they can't flourish, why would they stay planted? We've been blessed over the years to have people who have stayed for so long planted in the house of God and to see them flourishing and to see their children flourishing and to see their business flourishing and their endeavours flourishing and flourishing in their health or their education or whatever else. To me, that's what pastoring is all about. I love it. I don't want just a church full of dry old sticks, you know, that represented the plant from years before. I don't want just spindly looking ugly trees. I'm believing for a plantation of healthy, flourishing plants that it's coming back. The promise of God is coming back into your life in Jesus' name. And so let's believe for that together. Let's really genuinely believe for that together. You know something? You don't fluke healthy plants. Farmers, they don't fluke healthy crops. And horticulturalists don't fluke healthy plants. And floriculturalists don't fluke beautiful looking pretty flowers. No, they don't. They give attention to preparing to get the fruit that they want. And if you think about this for a minute, it's called agriculture. Agriculture. Plants are cultured. Agriculture, horticulture. Literally floriculture, flowers. And the culture part is the process a farmer will use or a person who producing plants will use, sometimes scientific, to develop the kind of results they want to get the fruit, to get the plant they want. And so the culture part is pretty significant. I don't think it's any coincidence that it's called horticulture, agriculture, so that people can get the fruitful plants they want. Because culture is critical when it comes to the fruit in our own lives. Our church has a culture. I think over the years it's been a very healthy culture. One of encouragement and life and hope and generosity. One of people believing to see people saved and to see God move on. A, a real commitment to seeing movement and growth and life in the lives of people. That's been the culture. And the result of the culture is fruitfulness. But if we don't take and give attention to the culture, what's going to be impacted is the fruit. Your life is a culture. It's the little things you do. It's the little things you don't do. It's the disciplines. It's the daily walks. It's the priority. It's whether you do honour God and put Him first, whether you do trust Him and take Him at His word, the way you trust an insurance company when you pay your due and you hope that they are going to cover you if there's a loss or the way you do trust whoever invests your superannuation because you put into that, hoping that when you're older, it's gonna come back into your life. And yet some Christians have trouble trusting God. And that's the culture of your life. Well, just like plants, it's the culture part of agriculture that determines the desired fruit. And it's the culture of our lives that determine what actually flourishes in your life. And so let's be intentional about the culture of our life. Don't just let it happen to you. Don't just be out on that wander. Just my journey is just a wander. My financial journey is just a wander. Into debt, out of debt, around debt. No, no, let's be on pilgrimage. Have a sense of purpose. Have a sense of direction. Your life is a pilgrimage. It's about the purpose of God. In Jesus' name, and we, can, we care and we steward the culture of our lives because we want to protect the flourishing fruit that God intends. So I have a thesaurus. It sounds like a prehistoric monster, doesn't it? A thesaurus. But no, it's a type of dictionary. Or What it is, many of you would know, is literally it just simply takes a word and then gives you a list of other words that mean the same thing. So my thesaurus, I looked up the word flourish. And I liked what it came up with. 
And I liked it so much, I literally want to speak it over your lives. Wherever you guys are watching, whatever location you're in, I want to speak it over your lives. For flourish, these are the words that it uses. To thrive, to increase, to develop, to advance, grow, progress, boom, bloom, blossom, prosper, burgeon, succeed, do well, move ahead, go forward, go ahead, go great guns, flower, bear fruit, become vigorous, be in your prime. Be in your prime. That's what flourishing means. Hey, can I speak it over your lives? Thriving, thriving, listen to it, thriving. Yes, increasing, developing, advancing, growing, progressing in Jesus' Name. Booming, <laughs> blooming, blossoming, prospering. I love this. Praise God. I'm lost. Succeeding. That's where we're up to. Yes, succeeding. Doing well. Moving ahead. Going great. Going forward. Going great guns, flowering, that's nice. Flowering, bearing fruit, praise God. Bearing fruit, becoming vigorous, whatever that means. Becoming vigorous, be in your prime. How is that? Hey, why don't you receive it? Seriously, I'm believing to see a, how are you, haven't seen you for years, a vineyard, a vineyard of flourishing people who are planted in the house of the Lord. I want you genuinely to take those words on board. You thought if you came late enough that everyone would ignore you back here, but it's not the way it works around here. Thriving, increasing, developing, advancing, growing, progressing, booming! <laughs> booming, blooming, blossoming in Jesus' Name. Prospering. Burgeoning. Oh, stand up, stand up, stand up. Please, sir, stand up. You must stand up. Stand up. People need to see that shirt. Chelsea today beat Manchester City 2 0. Thank you, Jesus. They are booming, blooming, burgeoning. <laughs> hey, honestly, I'd love you to get it in your spirit. I love you to get it in your spirit because this is what flourishing actually is. And that's the promise for people who create the kind of culture that's committed to having the right things flourish in your life so that you see coming back into your life everything that the devil or the canker worm has tried to rob from you. Always in your life, something is flourishing. Amen. There's always something flourishing. Always, man, they make it hard to get up and down around here. <laughs> Don't they? Hey, always vigorous. Oh, vigorous. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, look at that. Hey. Listen, something's prospering in your life. Something's flourishing in your life. In Psalm chapter one, it talks about the person who loves the, the law of the Lord, loves the word of God. And in verse three, compares that person to a tree. And it says, he should be like a tree, planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. And listen, whatever he does shall prosper. A tree planted by water, leaf won't wither, bears fruit in its season, and whatever he does shall prosper. Wouldn't that be nice if in life, everything you did just prospered? I mean, that'd be awesome. When everything you do, can I tell you this? Everything you do does prosper. But exactly what it is that is prospering is determined by what you do. Sadly, some people have all the wrong things flourishing all the wrong things prospering in their lives because of the culture. Because the culture determines the fruit. And if we would be committed and intentional about changing the culture, we could get the right things flourishing, the right things prospering in our lives. We can begin to see truly the promise of God coming back into our lives, the Word of the Lord working and coming back 
into our lives. What is flourishing in your life? And if you do want to change it, why don't you decide, God, I'm going to make adjustments to the culture of my life. Some of these small things, the words I speak, the way I think, my lack of ability to honestly trust you and put you first and to tithe and to give and to trust you in the front end of my life. I'm going to change it all because I'm believing to thrive. I love boom, bloom, blossom and burgeon. That's what I love. Boom, bloom, blossom and burgeon. Hey, if there's any young couple here and you're going to have four little girls, call them boom, bloom, blossom and burgeon. What great names. What great names for your kids. Boom, bloom. Boom could be a boy maybe. What do you think? Boom. Boom, bloom, blossom. You know something, people travel all over the world to go to Japan in season to see the spring blossoms. We're in spring right now in Australia, but that's naturally speaking. I want to speak springtime into people's lives here, spiritually speaking, where you're going to see the spring blossoms, where truly you're going to see the power of a flower opening up and bear fruit. I'm going to believe in Jesus' name that people truly will see the purposes of God, the things of God burgeoning. Burgeoning, burgeoning means exploding, exploding, flourishing, thriving, burgeoning. What a word, burgeoning. Yes. <laughs> you feel it? That's awesome. <laughs> nice knees too. <laughs> this guy's got shorts on. I'm telling him he's got nice knees and he's saying, telling me they're booming, they're booming. Hey, so, so let's think about it. Let's think about it. Think about how much the devil would love to devour. He's a defeated foe, but how much he would love to devour the fruit. The opposite words to those words are fail, fade, decline. Too often we can go into decline when it comes to the work of the Lord in our lives. We can find ourselves in decline going backwards. And I, to be honest, I think that's always a tragedy. Because there are things that would love to take out your fruit. Some of those things would include the pest the Bible talks about, little foxes. So Solomon says it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. Think of a beautiful, fruitful vine. And the one thing about little foxes is they're little. Yeah, which means they can't necessarily get right up to where the fruit is on the vine. So what do they do? They literally chew through and eat, eat the base of the vine. Bobby had this way back in um, our first house, Bobby had a little pergola and she had a jasmine vine on the top. And jasmine, it smells beautiful for about the four days in a year that it actually, <laughs> I think three weeks at the most is about all you get. But she loved her jasmine. And so we had a guy come around, he was painting the pergola and he was so proud of himself because when Bobby came home, he said, oh look, I had to, I cut back the the vine a little bit so I could get in and paint. He says, but don't worry, I've left it all, all up there on the top. What he did was he chopped everything off from the ground up to, and somehow, the guy wasn't the sharpest, I don't think. He somehow didn't realize that if he cut off the vine, we weren't gonna have too much flourishing going on in the flowers of the jasmine tree. Let's just say he never did another job for us. But it was weird, and yet that's how sometimes people let little things affect their lives. Little thinking, little thoughts, little bad mentality, little negativity, a little defeat, a little maybe gossip, critic, little, little things. Hey, let's protect the culture of our lives from the little things. That will stop us from seeing the purposes of God flourish in Jesus' name. So little foxes, the Bible talks about, it talks about Locusts and canker worms. Canker worms are caterpillars. They're caterpillars that, by the way, I read become American moths. So it's an American issue. <laughs> if nothing else works, just blame America. Hey, now listen, they are, you can tell these caterpillars because they, they literally bow up on their backs when they're moving. They, they kind of get up like that. Well, here in Australia, certain types of trees at the right time of the year or the wrong time of the year, we'll get absolutely covered in caterpillars. We've got a certain tree at our house, and every year, every year, at one point, you look and you can't see the bark. It's just the whole tree is covered in black caterpillars. Thousands of them. They're all making their ways up to the leaves so they can strip the leaves. But what happens with 
those caterpillars, which are canker worms, is that they literally leave lines in the bark, they weaken the bark of the tree. And so ultimately what it means is that other pests, other things can come in and attack that tree because the bark hasn't got the strength it used to have. So specifically, it talks about borer. Here in Australia, we have borer, and borer does just what it sounds like. It bores into the trunk of a tree and kills it from the inside out. And if we're not careful, what are the canker worms in your life that are basically weakening the foundations, weakening the base, that open you up and make you susceptible to other tanks? The fruit that God's got for you is too precious, too precious for you to let the enemy devour it by poor culture in your life. We can't ever allow the devil to devour the purposes of God in our church by allowing poor culture to develop in our church. No, we have to be committed to the daily things, committed to our part in keeping the church all that God wants it to be so that we can see all the right things flourish. And then there's locusts. The Bible talks a lot about locust plagues. And when locusts plague, when locusts swarm, they strip a field bare in just a moment. So I got reading about locusts. I'm virtually a biologist now. <laughs> so I read how locusts, they start in what is called the solitary phase, just one locust. And they're in very low numbers and they have very, very, the word used was innocuous. They're innocuous, they're harmless. When they're just alone, just one little harmless thing and they have virtually no effect on agriculture or the economy. That's when they're alone. But something happens to them. When there's a drought, when things are dry and then a season of heavy vegetation, serotonin goes to their brain and they change. They become like a different beast. So these little wingless initial, initially, these little wingless um, grasshoppers, <laughs> all of a sudden the serotonin goes to their brain and the, uh, not the Bible, what I was reading. It's, uh, they become gregarious, gregarious. In other words, friendly, over-friendly, extremely friendly, maybe a little amorous, actually totally oversexed. And then they breed in huge numbers, massive numbers. And then they become nomadic, their personality changes, migratory, so now, they start swarming. There's so many of them. They're called, in what I read, wingless nymphs. And these wingless nymphs, they suddenly develop wings and then they swarm. And once they swarm, they cause devastation. What's swarming in your life? And what is stopping the wrong things from swarming in your life? You see... I think sometimes we've got to be so careful we don't allow the conditions, the conditions to prosper in our lives in which things can swarm what is innocuous in its own strength. Something that's just small and innocuous, it's no big deal when it stands alone. But you know, just like in those locusts, sometimes something happens in our brain or something happens in our soul or something happens in our spirit and we allow things to flourish and maybe we're having a dry season and out of that dry season, a drought, comes the opportunity for that small innocuous thing to begin to swarm. You know, when things begin to swarm in a church, it generally becomes major division. By God's grace, we've never had that at a church and we never will because we're committed to the culture of the church. We're committed to making sure we don't create the environment where things can swarm. And you know, in Revelation 9, you read it sometime, the first verses of Revelation 9, it paints a picture of the bottomless pit, hell, with a fire, a furnace coming out of the bottomless pit. And then it talks about all these locusts swarming from the bottomless pit through the fire. They're demons. So it paints a picture of all these demons in the form of locusts that specifically have the goal of tormenting people. You know something? Demonic forces are real, but who is in you is stronger than any strategy the devil has. Who is in you is stronger. But if we don't take responsibility for the culture of our own lives, living by the Word of God, trusting God, putting Him first, sowing in, then believe me, demonic activity can try 
and torment you and strip you bare of the flourishing blessing that God has for you. And that's not what any of us want. We're believing it's coming back in Jesus' name. Thriving, increasing, developing, advancing, growing, progressing, booming, blooming, blossoming, prospering, burgeoning, succeeding, doing well, going ahead, moving forward, going great, going great guns, flowering, bearing fruit. Yes, becoming vigorous, being at your prime. That's what we're believing for in Jesus' name. Hey, but every plant needs to be watered. And what are you watering your life with? We water it with the Word. Hopefully you've been watered by the Word right now. But the one thing, the one thing every plant needs is generosity, water. Proverbs eleven twenty five says the generous soul. It's talking about being enriched on the inside. The generous soul will be made rich. And he who waters will also be watered himself. The person who is generous and waters, brings refreshment, hydrates other people's lives, will be hydrated themselves. And that's what we believe. We believe that God will hydrate your life. I know that in 2019, God is gonna hydrate, hydrate. In other words, water, Hillsong Church. Let me speak specifically right now for the city campus, that God will hydrate. We're gonna take... We're going to take responsibility for the culture of our church, the little things. We're going to protect them from the little boxes. We're going to protect them from the canker worms that would try to undermine the foundations. We're going to protect them from the locusts so that they cannot swarm, so that no demonic force can hold back what God is wanting to do. We're believing, we're thriving, we're increasing, we're developing, we're growing, we're moving forward in Jesus' Name. Yes, yes. That's what we're believing for. That's what we're believing for in every location, in every campus. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. It is the same thing. You know, I believe that God's called you to flourish, to flourish. You know, and that whole beautiful thought of a healthy vine and a healthy vine flourishing. And yes, you know, the enemy would at times try to attack the healthy vine that God has given you. But as you commit to the Word of God, living by the promise of God, you're gonna see the promise of God flourishing and you're gonna see it affect the people you love. The people you love, you're gonna see thriving, flourishing in the goodness of God, in the timing of God, in Jesus' Name. Amen. 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 Thriving. Thriving, flourishing in Jesus' name. God, I just pray you'll give him the courage to keep on making every adjustment that you would call him to make. Lord, to be planted in your house and to be flourishing like a healthy garden. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, amen. Listen, I think honestly, and if you know me a long time, you know I don't talk too much about demons and stuff like that. But I do think that sometimes demonic forces are launched against the people of God. But you know something? I believe also that it will come to naught in Jesus' name. If you feel like demonic forces, like literally the strategies of hell are trying to come against you in the financial area of your life, I believe it's gonna come to naught in Jesus' name, that you are gonna flourish like the Word of God says. It's gonna come to naught, that the weapons formed against you cannot prosper in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus. People who you love, children perhaps, who are away from God. And as I preach even, you feel an, an emptiness because they're not flourishing when it comes to the will of God. But listen to me, those people here, they're gonna flourish. They're gonna flourish. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord, stay planted, stay planted. They're gonna flourish. They're gonna flourish. They're going to flourish. And we thank you for it, Father. What? Just close your eyes for a moment. Every campus. Just think right now. What cultural changes do you need to make to get the fruit in your life that God intends for your life? For some, it means putting God first. Trusting Him with your finances. Trust is a big thing. 
It's a word I keep getting, trust. Trust in the Lord. Blessed are those people who trust in Him. Trust in Him in Jesus' name. Who trust in Him. Let's be intentional. Let's make the transformation. Let's make the changes. Father, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. If you feel like, you know, financially speaking, this is just, if you're visiting a church, I, very, I actually very rarely speak about finances. But I am right now, if you're visiting our church, and look, you really have been under financial attack. If you're part of our church, you've been under financial attack. And you almost feel like, you know, those locusts are trying to rip, rip bear and make bear all of the promise and blessing God's given you, then I want to pray for you. If, you. if you're bold enough and courageous enough, wherever you are, just stand up. In other words, you just feel like the devil's trying to strip bare the financial promises over your life. Yeah, if you're bold enough, just stand up and we'll trust God together. And Father, I just thank you in Jesus' name. Lord, when we trust you with our lives, we trust you with our lives. and We don't fully understand all of the things that confront us and sometimes the devil tries to hit us from the side where we didn't even see it coming. But Lord, I just speak your life and your promise into these lives. Help us to have the godly wisdom, Lord, to create the kind of culture where your will can flourish in our lives. Lord, I just thank you in Jesus' name for what you do do in people's lives. And I believe this testimony is coming up here. 2019, this testimony is coming up to God turning it around, turning it around in Jesus' name and bringing a new day with new promise. Lord, I thank you for it in your mighty name. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Come on. Shall we stand? For those who joined us, you're welcome now to go live where you are. You're welcome to go live now where you are. You finish the meeting or where you are. In my father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am chosen. put our hands together and just give Pastor Brian a hand. What a great message. What a great message. And you know, that's the heart of our church. Look, if you are visiting and you knew it, look, the heart of our church is we want to believe that everything that you get to walk in, everything that God has for you, that's the only agenda. And um, you know, again, if please, I would ask everyone just to stay still for a moment. And for those of you who stay right to the end, thank you, make such a difference to our service. Because I want to pray, I want to give people an opportunity to say yes to Jesus. If you're here, maybe you're watching, then it's because God's doing something in your life. And if you've never ever said yes to Jesus, you've never actually made a conscious decision to ask Him into your life, this is why it's important. See, the Bible says you're not an accident. The Bible says that God, God created you. God not only created you, the Bible says He actually has a, a plan and a purpose for your life. 
And you know what? God loves you on your best day and He still loves you on your worst day. God's for you. The problem is, and there is a problem, the Bible says that we've sinned. You've sinned. I've sinned. And the, ch the challenge with sin is that not only does it separate us from God, but it gives us no way back to Him. And the Bible says that one day we'll stand before a judge and we miss out in heaven. But it also means that there's something missing on earth now. Here's the missing piece. See, religion can't get you to God no matter what banner it is. Because religion's about what you do to get right. The Bible says there's nothing you can do to get right. That's why God did something for us to get right. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, Jesus, that whoever believes in Him should not perish because of sin be separated, but have eternal life. And I want to give people an opportunity here and those that are watching to say yes to Jesus, to ask God to forgive you, to ask Him to come into your life, to accept Jesus as your Saviour and your Lord. And you know, the moment you do, the Bible says all your sins are forgiven, but it's more than that. And now means the God who's up there now becomes a God who's in here. He becomes real. He is the missing piece. I'm gonna ask everyone to close their eyes, bow their heads. And if that's you, and you know you need to say yes to Jesus. You know it. Maybe you're backslidden once you walk with God, but you know you're far. But today you're coming home. If that's you in a moment, everywhere, I'm gonna ask you quite simply just to raise your hand, say, Sam, that's me. And when you do, you're simply saying, yes, I accept Jesus. Yes, I wanna get my life right with God. So if that's you right now, raise your hand, say, Sam, that's me. You're talking to me. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm watching. That's why I'm listening. Thank you. Just raise your hand quickly. Say, Sam, that's me. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. It's not too late. Raise your hand. Say, Sam, that's me. Awesome. Wonderful. Those that are watching, wonderful. This is what we're going to do right now. We're going to pray a prayer. Simply a prayer that says, forgive me. A prayer that simply says, Jesus, come into my life. And in the moment you pray, the Bible says, the moment you pray this prayer, you will be saved. So come on, everyone everywhere, especially if you raised your hand or maybe you did and you still haven't missed out, you pray this prayer as well. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I, thank you. I thank you. You died on the cross for my sin. You died on the cross for my sin. I believe you rose again. I believe you rose again. I ask that you will forgive me. I ask that you will forgive me. And that you'll come into my life. And that you come into my life. Thank you. Thank you. I'm now saved. I'm I'm now, I'm now a child of God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Come on, church. The Bible says all of heaven, all of heaven in this moment is rejoicing because you made that decision. This is what we want to do. We want to give you this Bible as a gift. So when you leave any of, any of the exits in all the foyers, there's people waving these Bibles around. They're doing it because they're trying to get your attention. So go to them, go to them. Say, hey, I prayed that prayer. And look, if you didn't pray that prayer, can I just say, you didn't miss out. Go to them, say, hey, I didn't pray that prayer. I should have. And we'd love to give you this as a gift. Is that cool? Awesome, fantastic. Hey, I wanna pray and believe God for your week. Don't forget tonight is the anointing service, okay? Get here a little early, five o'clock in the epicenter, six o'clock here. We're also gonna be praying for all the children uh, in our children's ministry. We've also got water baptism. So look, if you wanna be water baptized, tonight is the night. Let us know at the information desk and we'd love to get you to join in and be water baptized with us. But I wanna pray and I wanna believe God with you. Father, I thank you so much in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that it is coming back. Lord, that your word is true. And Father, I pray that as we go, I thank You that, Father, You're preparing people's hearts for tonight. Lord, that, that anointing, that breakthrough, Lord, is coming in 2019. And as we go, we go knowing we have the grace and we have the favour of God with us. In Jesus' Name, Amen, Amen. God bless you. God bless you, church. Grab something to eat before you go. We'll see you tonight.